Hey guys, it's your wax girl. I wanted to start a new series about kind of the basics of candle making. I know a lot of us do container candles and fun tutorials, but I thought this is a good start for making things in molds versus containers. Okay, so you're going to start out with a long piece of wick. <laughs> That's what they're called. Of a wick. And here is the mold I'm using today. It is a big, big, uh, like, cylinder mold. There's a little tiny hole on the bottom of these metal molds, and that is where you're going to thread in your wick. So that, uh, well, you'll see. <laughs> I don't even know where I was going with that completely lost my mind. So pull through your wick and you are going to, the easiest thing I can say is to use a wick bar, which are these bars where you can shove basically your wick into and it holds the wick straight in the middle as long as you line it up correctly. It holds it straight up so that your wick will not fall down into your into your wax, which I find helpful because I choose not to use wicks that have a metal core which is what helps them stand up nice and straight without the use of something to hold them up you know uh, other than a wick bar you could use chopsticks with a rubber band I mean there's lots of different options but these wick bars are pretty easy to find online uh, so what you're going to do now is you need to seal up the bottom and keep the wick from moving so you use kind of like a poster tack or you know kind of sticky putty like substance to kind of press in there you want to press it tight to keep your wick from moving and to keep any wax from falling out the bottom because that would be awful <laughs> and that would make a huge mess now i'm going to kind of tell you about also using molds for the first time too because you want to make sure that your mold works properly and so i would say the first time you're using a mold test it out with wax and make a candle that you don't necessarily care about or that uh, you aren't going to sell to a client. So now that everything is nice and tight, I want to give you kind of a warning about these molds too. I pretty seriously, well not seriously, but I cut my thumb. It bled for a while. These edges on these molds are very, very sharp. And if you are a klutz <laughs> or if you're not paying attention, it is very easy to slice your appendages. So either wear gloves when handling them or just be extremely cautious because they are very sharp and will cut you very quickly. Even the wick bars are extremely sharp. So just be careful. <laughs> All right. So what I like to do first, especially when I'm using a new mold, is to pour a little bit of my melted wax into the bottom. I didn't melt all my wax. These are old candles I made that I just decided they're taking up too much space and I wanted to melt them all together. So I'm using that for this demonstration. So first check to make sure that your hole is nice and plugged, that nothing is leaking out. You want to check where they have welded the bottom to make sure nothing is leaking there and up the side. Just, you know, it would suck to make a really beautiful, expensive candle and to have it leak everywhere. Fill your mold, let it harden, depending on the size of your mold, I would say comfortably a couple of hours. Now a lot of times with candles when they when they cool, they tend to shrink a little bit or there tends to be air bubbles that pop out. Things can happen. The top almost never looks perfect. Trust me, <laughs> I it happens a lot. So I like to take my heat gun and I just melt a little, a little bit of the entire top surface. Make sure you do it nice and evenly on top so that when it does cool, it is flat across. That it isn't going to dip in the middle because you only melted the middle etc. I would have melted more if this was a client candle, but because this is just a demonstration, I only melted a very, very small amount. I would say melt probably an eighth of an inch down. So once your candle is completely cooled, as you see at the top, it is starting to pull away. And I lightly squeeze to kind of release the, the suction around the edges of the candle. You're going to remove the putty first, otherwise your candle is going to stay stuck. I have definitely done that in the past. You're going to remove the putty so that it comes out. In this candle, I have used uh, pillar wax, soy wax. It is designed to pull away from the edges of the mold. Container wax, on the other hand, adheres so that it's a nice, it's a nice candle all the way around the edges of your container. 
Uh, currently the company that makes the soy wax is redoing their formula so it is not being sold but it sh will soon. I'm going to do a video uh, about probably the three most popular types of waxes for candles coming soon. Uh, so if you are using a container of wax there are generally some sort of solutions. Um, you can google it to figure out what you could wipe around the edge of your mold to make sure it doesn't stick. Now you want to kind of clean up your candle. It will have bumps and ridges from just the mold being made. It is how it is. So I just like to t run a knife or scissors down the edge of my mold to kind of get rid of that line. You can buff it out. Your choice. <laughs> and then you want to trim your wick, of course, a quarter of an inch for safety and for the optimal burning. And then what you're going to also do is trim this bottom because it will not sit flat. I don't use scissors for this because scissors can't get very close. So I use an X-Acto blade, um, a disgusting, dirty X-Acto blade. <laughs> I was cutting wax with it. And you are just going to quickly not cut your, sorry, it's super blurry because that's how I roll. Um, you're going to use the correct side of the exacto blade. It's been a long day um, to nicely trim up your candle. I probably would have trimmed it even shorter actually, but this way it will sit nice and flat and it won't wobble. So there you have it. Um, these things are pretty heavy. These molds come in all sizes. I have seen a giant mold of this exact kind, but it was like four feet tall. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Connect with me on my social media in the links still below. I also quickly wanted to mention that I have a Patreon. I haven't mentioned it before, but on there you can find all my videos. I'll post them over time, but also other projects I work on. I paint with wax. I do crochet. I sometimes I sketch anything else and special perks can be found there. Um, I thought it would be another cool place to connect. And with that, I will see you next time. Peace!